So I just saw this question on uh, social media. Somebody was asking, how could you get these little grill poles uh, onto an object like this? And I wanted to show a few ways I've done it because I've run into this problem in the past and it can be, uh, it can, if you don't do it in a certain way, it can result in slow render times um, or a bad result. So let's go into Blender and quickly model this initial shape. So there's a number of ways. The first way we could get a texture and we could use it as an alpha mask. But that would mean trying to find that exact texture or, or creating it in a uh, something like Photoshop, which could be quite slow. So the way I would normally do it is I'd create a new object. So maybe a plane. I'll shrink it down a bit and we'll scale it in this direction. Apply that scale. Uh, GZ will bring it up a bit so it's above that object. Into edit mode. I'm going to bevel those edges because in here you can see they are quite beveled curved on the uh, on the corners so into edit mode choose number one control B for bevel and V for vertices we'll bring it in lights in there give it a, a bit of resolution not too much because it's going to be so small and we're going to top view orthographic select it all and I'll do shift D and I'll move it on the X somewhere about there and I'll shift R to repeat that a few times select it all shift D Move it this way, and this time I want to offset it so it's about halfway. So GX to about here, and I select it all, Shift D Y, move that up. I'm just eyeballing it; doesn't have to be perfect. And then Shift R until we've got approximately the shape we want. Select it all, and then I'll choose to scale down to the bottom about here. So I want it about there. I'll put my 3D curve. Oh, I'll make this. I'll make this vertex active by clicking it and then unclicking it with shift held down. I'll press full stop on the keyboard and I'll choose the pivot to be the active element. And if I scale this down now, we can get that to about where we want it. Let's look in wireframe. About there, looks exactly in the middle. And I'll bring it across a little bit as well because it's only the these edges, if we look on here, it's only slightly going over the over the corner of the object. So now we've got it aligned, what we need to do somehow is take this geometry and project it onto this object so that it, it sort of uh, it cuts this geometry into that object. And it's actually very straightforward. There's a tool called Knife Project. And what Knife Project does, it will, depending on the view that you're looking at, it will project one geometry onto another. So it is all dependent on the view. So for example, if I projected it from here, then it would cut into the into this area of the object underneath. If I did it from here, so if I come into about here, and I'll select the object I want to cut into, I'll go into edit mode, I will control click on the cutter, press F3, choose or type in knife project and then click on it, and it will cut in based on the view. So you can see we've got that all the way across. If I undo that, what I want to do is project it from the top view, but to avoid any distortion caused by the left side being parallel to the camera, but the right side of the object we're cutting onto being at an angle, what we need to do is align the view to the sort of an in-between of the two. And we can do that if we just come out of here select this object into edit mode number two to go into edge mode we will select this edge and if we press shift seven now the view has been aligned with the normal of that edge and the normal of that edge is the average of the face to the left and the face to the right so we're not looking at the left face dead on and we're not looking at the right face dead on we're sort of looking at an angle between both of those faces so this will avoid distortion and what we can do now is, into edit mode, control click on this one, F3, knife project, give it a second, if we come down, it should select the edges underneath. If it doesn't select them for some reason, all you need to do is press control Z and then they will be selected.
So we can see now that the shape of these isn't distorted. It doesn't get longer on this side because of the angle that we're looking at. It was more of an even uh, match. So what we can do at this point is hide this plane, go back into edit mode. So let's just change over to cycles, go into rendered view. In fact, let's just make a copy of the object. On this one, if I delete those faces, X and then delete faces, and we'll just hide the overlays, and we go inside the box, you can see that is taking a long time to render. I mean, I am on a 4K monitor, and I'm only using a GTX 1070, but you can see that is really slow to render, and that's because all the rays that Cycles uses, like the light ray, the reflection ray, etc., are all coming inside those holes and then bouncing around inside this object, and it's going to slow down rendering. I mean, even if we're outside the box, it's still going to be rendering inside, and it's still going to be noisy. So let's hide that one. The alternative way, if we select this one, and we'll go into edit mode, and we'll go into materials, we'll give it two new materials, and we'll call this one holes, and we'll call this one body. And we're going to apply the holes material just to those selected holes. So sign. And then the body, I'm going to apply to the rest. If we bring up the material editor, and we'll set the body first, and we'll make this uh, just, yeah, that's fine, just a standard white material. And the holes, we're going to do something a bit different. So if we do Shift A and we put down a transparent node, this is going to render the same as if there was no geometry there. So it's still going to be quite slow. If I go inside, it's still really slow to, uh, to render. All right, so what we can do instead, instead of just using transparent, we can say we only want the camera to be able to, send, to see through these holes. So we're going to get rid of this principled, we'll shift A, S, and we're going to put it down a diffuse. So we want to say, if it's the camera rays, we'll use transparency. If it's not, we'll just make those holes solid black. So we need to do a shift A, and then we're going to do a mix shader. Put that there. We'll put the transparent into the bottom. So that'll be the one that, if it's true, it's the camera, it will use the bottom one. And then we'll put the black diffuse into the top and then we're going to use something called a light path node so this gives us access to the all the rays that cycles will use let's change over to gpu so even with the gpu it's really noisy and if we plug this camera socket the camera ray it'll, the cycles will say is it a camera ray that we're currently using and if it is then we're going to use transparency so we can see through it but if it's not, then we're going to use this diffuse. So all the other all the other light rays, like the diffuse and the glossy ray, uh, shadow rays, ones that cause a lot of noise, are not going to make it through. So it's going to render really quick. Now, if I want to have some light still coming in and still get quite a clean render, what we can do is add in some diffuse. So the diffuse ray is the one that's responsible for lighting up a surface. But the problem is, if we add it just by Shift A S and then use a mix RGB, so we're going to add this into the camera ray so that both the camera ray and the diffuse ray, the, the rays coming from the lights, can now pass through that because they're going to see it as a transparent material. And all the others still, all the other rays, they're just going to see it as a black surface. So make sure we've got this set to add. And we change the factor to one so that it's fully adding them together. If I change it back down to zero, then it's only going to pass through whatever's plugged into the top socket. So zero is the top socket, one is the bottom one. If we add them together fully, it's going to pass them both out uh, combined. So what I need to do is make sure that we don't get any indirect lighting. And the way to do that is, well, there's a number of ways. We can either do it in the render panel and we can set the diffuse rays to zero and that means we're only going to get the direct ray we're not going to get any bounce lighting so you can see that that is quite clean that's rendered much faster than if we set it to eight and that is quite noisy now and the way we can do it we've got something in the light path 
called the ray depth. And the ray depth is the number of times that the ray has bounced off of a surface. So let's just move this across. And instead of setting it to always add them together, we want to say only add the diffused ray to the camera ray if it hasn't bounced, basically. So Shift A, and we're going to put down a math node. And we're going to change this to compare. And we're going to plug in the ray depth into the value. And we're going to say, is it equal to zero? And it's got to be exactly zero. Basically, the epsilon is the leeway either side. So if I change this to one, then it would work if it was either negative one, zero, or one. We want it to be exactly zero. And if I plug that in now into the top there, it's only going to add them together if the ray depth is zero. But we want to add the diffuse if the diffuse ray has hit once only. So let's change that to one. And now you can see we're getting the same result as if we change the diffuse here. But the difference is this is only applying to rays that have hit this particular material, which is applied to those holes. So it doesn't affect the rest of the scene, you know, and the rest of the scene can continue to be uh, realistic. But this is all we need. We don't need anything incredible, a quality rise regarding bounce lighting or reflections. And this ensures that it will still render fast. And if we come outside, you can see now, we can actually see there is light getting inside that box. And it will just add to the realism whilst keeping the render really fast. So that's the, that's the way I would recommend to do it. And... Yeah, I hope you find it useful. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Well, I won't see you, but, you know.